Welcome back, newbies. This is the Hive Doctor, your beekeeping mentor. It's my job to take the guesswork out of beekeeping for you. Today, we're going to be talking about the elements that you need to consider in order to find and locate the best spot for your apiary. And remember, apiary is just a really fancy uh, word for bee yard. So where are you going to put your bees? I'm going to help you figure it out today. In this episode, we're going to go over the four elements that you need to consider when deciding where the best place is to put your bees. And that spot is called an apiary. I often just call it my bee yard. Um, but the four elements, what those are, is foot traffic. Where do you walk the most? Like, you wouldn't put a beehive at your front door. So foot traffic, sun exposure accessibility and mostly by vehicle is what what i'm referring to in that in that case and the last one is geographical and climactic considerations we're going to go over those four elements uh, individually so we're going to go ahead and start off with foot traffic so when you're locating your be your the place you're going to put your bees you need to take into consideration the foot traffic in other words where you're coming and going from the most and this could be broke, broken down into zones. So like around your home would be zone one, the highest amount of foot traffic. Uh, out the front, back doors, to your car, the mailbox, your driveway. Places that have high amounts of foot traffic are gonna be places that you want to avoid establishing your apiary. The second zone would be just a little bit further out and bees can be put there if faced away from zone one, the high areas of foot traffic. Because when bees come and go from a hive, you can actually see like an air traffic of them coming and going. And if you interrupt that, if you come in between it, you could get popped in the face, you could get stung, or a bee could just run into you because they're kind of clumsy like that. But tech, um, ideally, if you have property where you have like a zone three, which is further away from zone one and two, that'd be the best place to put your bees as far as foot traffic is concerned. The next thing to take into consideration is gonna be sun exposure. How much sun are they getting? How much shade are they getting? And what time of the day? So with sun exposure, ideally you want your beehives to face anywhere between east and south. They can face southeast, it doesn't matter. And the reason for that is they get the early morning sun shining on the face of their boxes. And as you can see behind me, it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. There's sun on all of these hives. I can see bees already flying. They're busy, they're coming out. We're in the upper 50s right now. We're supposed to get into the 70s today. But their sun exposure is good. And right now the sun is over here. It will come up and set over there. So my bees will get sun the majority of the day. And although they are up against a tree line, there's a large oak in the longest days of summer, they'll probably get some shade. And some shade is okay. Um, if your bees could get sun during the morning and afternoon, and then for the rest of the day, get some shade during the hotter part of the day, that would be super. But if you don't have something like that, full sun is not going to hurt them. <clears throat> I learned beekeeping in Florida, and we had hives out in the middle of a cow pasture that didn't have um, shade of any kind all day. And down there, it is hot. And the bees, they did well. They fan their, their hive, bringing a circulation throughout to regulate the temperature. Another good reason why you want to consider good ventilation when you're choosing your beekeeping equipment to help your bees be able to regulate that in hive temperature. One place you never want to put your bees is in 24-7 shade. In the woods, I've done that and it's horrible. Not only are they less productive, but varroa mites seem to thrive more in the shade. Even when I treated for them on time and appropriately, the Varroa just kicked my bees butts. So don't ever put your bees in full shade if possible. If you're in an area where 
let's say maybe you're in a cabin up in the woods and your bees only get a few hours of sunlight during the, the uh, high noon part of the day, then so be it. I mean, you, you've got to do the best you can. But the takeaway from this should be your, your bees need to ideally face away from your high foot traffic areas and hopefully that is in the direction of south, anywhere between south and southeast. We're gonna talk about accessibility. How easy is it to get to your apiary? When it comes to establishing your apiary, you wanna make sure that accessibility is easy. Now, when you only have a few hives, the accessibility can be by foot. Like you can be able to walk to it. You don't wanna put it on a steep hill. That's gonna be difficult. The thing you need to keep in mind is you're going to be harvesting honey eventually, and honey is heavy. So finding an area that is gentle, sloping, and level is going to be the best. A place that's steep is not going to be ideal because you're going to be carrying heavy things. If you're going to have a lot of hives, and in this case I'm going to call a lot, five or more, it would, you would really benefit from being able to access your apiary by vehicle, like being able to pull up with your truck or whatever so that you can bring equipment in that you need instead of hiking it in and so that you can take the honey harvest away without having to carry it. So accessibility is key when it comes to locating your, your apiary. Now, this apiary right here, it's in a cow pasture. I've got to come through a gate down there but it's easily accessible. I can drive up in here with my truck or my car right up to the fence and do everything that I need. I can bring in equipment, I can take equipment out, I can load my truck with honey, really easy. I can take part of that fence down and step over it if I need to, uh, but getting in and out is easy here. I had a yard once that I had to hike up into the woods for and it was not easy, I hated it. And I learned a lot from that. Um, it was probably a hundred yards up into the woods and they made a lot of honey. Not only did I have to haul all those hives in and all the honey out, but then I had to move the bees out too. And I had to get a lot of help to do that because beekeeping can get, it can be backbreaking. So make sure that when you locate your, your apiary, you're away from high foot traffic areas, you're in a good area for sun exposure, and then you're in an area where you can access your, your hives, even if it's with like those little gators or a wheelbarrow, but ideally your vehicle if you're gonna have a bunch of hives. We're gonna talk about geographical and climactic um, considerations when locating your apiary. An often overlooked consideration when it comes to locating your bee yard is geographical and climactic conditions. Now the yard that I'm in right now these bees used to be located in the middle of this pasture and it was great. It was a nice flat area, but the, the grass grew so high and so fast that it would ground out my electric bear fence and I could not keep up with getting, keeping the grass maintained and mowed and weed eated. Um, and so although it was a great location for accessibility, it was not ideal because of the grass. So what I did is I moved these bees up towards the tree line. It's really rocky up there. And so I don't have any grass that I have to mow. The only thing I have to deal with here, which you can tell I'm a little behind on, are these little scrub pine trees growing. And those are easy enough to deal with. But geographically, you wanna make sure that your bees are not gonna be in an area where they're gonna get a lot of high wind. They're not gonna be in a flood zone. I have bees in a flood zone. It, it never washes the bees away. It's not that bad, so I don't want you to get the wrong idea, but I've had water come up into my yard. It's a good thing that my hives are on hive stands. In that particular yard, I had to adapt and build higher hive stands, so I feel a lot better about it. The creek that they're located at, it may break the bank one to three times a year, so it's not enough for me to really feel nervous about, but it's definitely something I had to adapt to. Geographically, take stock into where you're located. What are the, the harsh conditions, the harshest that you have to deal with? In Florida, we had to deal with hurricanes. So when a hurricane, when we knew a hurricane was coming, we had to make sure to not open up a hive at least a week before that hurricane hit because the bees propolize all this equipment together. 
so it's sticky, it's stuck. It's not going to move. That way, none of the hive covers are going to fly off. If, if I came along and checked on a hive before a hurricane came, that lid is going to be loose now and I could possibly lose it. That's why a lot of beekeepers will put bricks or rocks on top of their hive covers to keep those from flying off. You need to make sure, you need to be aware of the harsh climactic conditions in your area, your geography. Um, and I would say out of the four elements that you need to consider when establishing your bee yard, even though geographical and climactic conditions are important, they're the, the ones you have the least control over. So it's more likely how can you adapt to your particular conditions and circumstances in your area. One thing with this yard, these bees never have to worry about water because there's no creek around. But even if there was, they're on high ground. They're on the highest point. So I don't ever have to worry about them when we get heavy rains. So those are the four elements. Again, take into consideration the foot traffic. You don't want to put bees in zone one at all. If you have a small piece of property, zone your zone two where there's less foot traffic. And if you can face those bees away from your house, that would be great. And especially so if facing those bees away from your house in a south to east, anywhere within that range direction, that is gonna be the best. And how easy is it to access your bee yard? Can you come and go with equipment easily or is it a chore? You don't want it to be a chore. Beekeeping has enough chores as it is. So uh, it's good to keep those minimal. And then the last one is take into consideration the challenges weather-wise and uh, geographically uh, of your area so that you know what to do to adapt. And I'll give you one more example there. I see a lot of pictures online where in, in other countries they have a big problem with bear. And they will actually put their bees way up in a tree which doesn't make sense to me because bears can climb trees, but maybe there's more to it than I, than I understand. But anyways, that's just an example of how they've adapted to their area and situation. And, and you can too. And don't forget, you can easily comment on this video and ask for advice. Hey Jonathan, here's my situation. I'm not really sure what to do. Where should I put my bees? And I'd be happy to help. So, on to the next episode. As always, thank you for watching to my apprentices. Don't forget to drop me one of these. Check the description and the links below for the tools and equipment and gear that I use. And don't forget to subscribe.